and today we are going to inform you on how to improve your credit score. So, based on the surveys you guys did the other day, 27 out of 30 of you, or 90% of the class, have a credit card. So if you have a credit card, you have a credit score. And while that number doesn't seem that important right now, it will be in a couple of years when you're seeking out banks and lenders and credit bureaus for help on purchasing a house or a car. So what is credit score? A credit score is a three-digit number that represents how responsible you are with handling money, your credentials, your how trustworthy you are, and this will help you in the long run. The range the number fall under is 800, 850, which is the highest, and 300 is the lowest you can get if you're unfortunate enough. And there's five groups that it falls under. If it's higher than 750, you're exceptional. 700 to 749, you're very good. 650 to 699, you're good, you're average good. 550 to 649, you're fair, and anything lower than that is five, uh, is four. So it's important to know what range you're in because that's in the range that you're, you're in is the is the how likely banks will give you credit. So if you don't know your credit score, you can find out today by contacting by contacting one of the three bureaus, and you can request a free credit report. And by law, they have to provide it for you. And so there are two kind of credit score that we'll be looking at. One of them is FICO score, which when we're talking about credit score, that's the one that comes to mind the first. And another one is a Vantage score. Vantage score is introduced in 2006. It's developed by the three credit reporting agency, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. The scoring model they use is they will combine all three, all the re report files from three of them, and then come up with a single formula. It only requires one month history and one account, if, one account in the past two years, so it's relatively good news to a new account holder or a new credit owner or a, if you haven't been using your credit. For FICO score, 90% of the top lenders uses FICO score. It's developed during 1989 by Fair Isaac Corporation. The scoring model is based separately from the three uh, credit bureaus, and they come, they have a separate <coughs> formula. So you'll have different credit score for, it depends on which, uh, which credit bureau that your lender or the bank go to. So you have different, and the most recent credit score that you're, they're using is FICO score eight, which, some lenders still use like previous credit, uh, previous version of FICO score, but they will, there will be no big difference. They, they should be really close to each other. <coughs> and comparing to the uh, requirement for Vantage score, FICO score requires six month credit history and one account within, one account activity within the past six months. So it's really kind of, it's stricter than the Vantage score. And what's in your FICO score? As we can see in the graph, there's five t factors that they consider. Your payment history, your amount owed, the length of credit history, new credit, and credit mix. For 35% of your credit score, it's about your payment history. It's how much, uh, it's how, uh, how you paid previously, and have you ever missed a payment? If so, how recently, how often, and how late are you at? And have you ever filed bankruptcy or foreclosure, or do you have a tax lien? For the amounts owed, it's the debt that you're carrying recently. They will have to check if you're, have you ever maxed out your credit card or be near to it, and how much did you utilize your credit card? So if you're on the 90%, you use 90% of your credit limit, there will be a uh, caution that it's not a good idea to lend you more money because you'll be exceeding that. For the length of credit history, it will be in your credit report for two, two years. 
everything will be there, but FICO score only considers the credit history for the past 12 months. So the new credit is how, how actively you are seeking for a new credit for the past 12 months. So if you're looking for a single credit, or if you're looking for a home mortgage and a car loan and all kind of different credit at the same time, they'll consider your higher risk than if you're looking for one loan for during that time period. For the credit mix, it's what account and how, and what kind, what types of account that you're owning now. And what's in your credit report? It's your identify information, trade line, credit increase, public records, and collections. The identity information is basically your general information about your name, your social security, and your race, your where you live, your date of birth, and your employment status. That won't affect your credit scoring, it's just a general information about you. The trade line is about your credit account and when it do when's the account open, how long is the credit history, and the balance between each account. For credit increase, there are two kind of credit increase. It's, uh, one, one of them is voluntary, it's you seeking for your accessing your credit report, and another kind is involuntary. There are four kinds of uh, increase that the account store to, which are promotion, consumer disclosure, insurance, and employment, which will come towards, counts towards you because it's not your side. The, for the public record and collection part, it's, they will list if there's any that that turnover into a collection agency, if you have filed a bankruptcy with a court, or if there's any tax lien. So they will contact the county office and the court to see if there's anything going on. And I'll pass it on to Christine to see what impacts your credit score. There are several factors that impact your credit scores. There's, I'm going to talk about the most common ones, which are outstanding debt, <coughs> loans, and mortgage. It's balance that you still owe and you tend to overlook. It's balance that you don't take care of quite, quite quickly, and the longer it stays on your record, the damaging it can be, because it stays on your record for seven years. So it. The credit bureaus can see that, so the longer you take, it, it just shows that you're not as trustworthy with paying your loans back. The second most common one is rate payments, which kind of fall underneath the first one, is if you constantly make late payments or no payment at all, it shows that you're a high risk borrower and you're, more, you're most likely not being able to pay back. And the third option is the third factor is not e even your fault, it is fraud. And that is most commonly used through identity, identity theft. It's where they steal your information, your name, your social security, or your credit information. And they is what they do, you know, they go on shopping sprees, they buy outrageous items, and they get to keep the benefit, but you, you're left with and ways that you can fix these problems are by establishing a positive history. Is what I mentioned before. Don't make consistent month payment. Do it monthly. If you miss a payment or two, is is not as damaging as you think. It won't affect you as much. The second factor is to reduce your balance. Work at it. Reduce the amount that you owe, and the closer you get to zero, zero the, the more work, the less worries that you have. Establish a long-term credit history. Keep your credit card open as long as possible. The length of your credit card does the age of it. It increases your scores and it shows that you're a stable user and you know how to manage your account over time. The fourth factor is to don't open and close unnecessary account. If you open up too many account. Um, during the same time period or too, too, too often, it shows that you rely too much on credit and you, 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 can't, you can't get by on your own efforts. If you close the account too often or you close it too quickly, then it shows that you're, 
it shows that you, you're trying to hide something and you seem suspicious or sketchy if you close it off with still balance on it. And then the last option is to for anything else you want to put to you want to put into consideration. So it could be rent, it could be car payment, it could be phone bills. All of those are documents of your of your payment history and it can be put put into consideration. I'm not sure what you said. <coughs> And other options, other things you can, <laughs> other things you can know is for future reference, if you're planning on being, if you're planning on being parents one day, and your kid's identity gets stolen, you can freeze their account, so it, it can protect them from further damage. Another advice, you can dispute if you find any mistakes or errors or something that you don't find accurate. You can file to, the, to one of the three credit bureaus and make a complaint, state your concern, give your evidence, your facts, and the explanation, and they will come back, they will call, they will get back to you in 30 days. And you are protected under two acts, which one is the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which I mentioned before, you have a right to a free credit report, you have the right to know what is in it, you have the right to know who saw it, what information, and when they saw it. And Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which is general information, you can't be discriminated against your age, your race, your religion, your marital status against getting credit. And if you are denied credit, then you have the, right, the legal right to know. And that's all the So our conclusion will be planning ahead and be smart when you're using your money. So and. Paying your bills sometimes, as we can see, the payment history is a large portion of your credit score. And manage your account regularly so you can see if there's anything unusual that's going on with your account and you can check on to see how many balance to you get and what's the next step you should take to improve your credit score. And these are some inf information about the three credit bureaus that we just mentioned. If you have any concern or you want to request for a free credit report, <coughs> you can feel free to contact them. And for any additional information, you can go on myfico.com for your FICO score. And there's a USA.gov <coughs> website that you can look for. That's all, all other information you can look at. And if you're unable to resolve your, prob uh, your problem with the credit reporting agencies, you can file a complaint or you can go talk to Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That's a, and they will help you out with it. Are there any questions?